Hello, everyone. I'm Juliana. I'm working at NXP. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Linux kernel uh, BSP team. I'm working on uh, Linux, uh, mostly audio subsystem, uh, Zephyr, and also sound open firmware. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how to integrate my proprietary code in Zephyr. And uh, the agenda for today, it's the following. So we are going to talk about Zephyr structure to see where we want to integrate proprietary code and where we are allowed to do that, about uh, the license of uh, Zephyr, um, some uh, information about the requirements of uh, application development and how can we create an application, uh, about out of three device drivers, Next topic would be toolchains, uh, a case study of sound open firmware and its integration with Zephyr, and uh, at the end, we're gonna draw some conclusions. So uh, let's see, Zephyr project is based on West tool. Uh, Zephyr folder, the last one here, it's the main manifest repository. It contains the source code of real time, or the Zephyr real time operating system. The West uh, uh, .west uh, folder contains the West configuration files. And when we initialize a Zephyr workspace, uh, multiple uh, folders are created, like the bootloader there. It, it's associated with the bootloader used by Zephyr. That's uh, typically MCU boot. We have modules. These are projects uh, that Zephyr relies on. Uh, they bring uh, functionality and features uh, that are approved and endorsed by Zephyr Technical Steering Committee. Uh, there are multiple categories of modules, um, including but not limited to uh, debugger integration, um, uh, silicon vendor hardware abstraction layer, um, what else? Uh, file system, uh, cryptographic libraries, interprocess communication libraries, uh, and more. Optional modules uh, are uh, a subset of the modules above. Uh, these are not used by uh, all. Uh, applications from Zephyr. Uh, they are used by some of them uh, and they are brought in, uh, in Zephyr uh, based on the specific, of, uh, uh, the specific requirements of an application. So if you want to bring this optional module, you have to do a West config before doing West update. Update populates and fetches all these modules. And then we have tools where we have different tools for, uh, uh, for testing. On the right side, we have some uh, modules example that can be found in uh, Zephyr project repository, uh, like SDK and G, where we have the Zephyr SDK, and, uh, uh, which contains the toolchain and uh, some development tools. The cross tool NG is used to build the toolchains. Uh, Docker image uh, provides a Docker image for uh, Zephyr development and uh, testing. Uh, we have there some examples, CMC's DSP and CMC's NN are um, optimized library used for computation and neural network. OpenMP, LimMetal are examples for interprocess communication. Uh, LittleFS, it's an example of a fail-safe uh, uh, file system uh, designed for MCUs. And there are more, uh, others. Now, uh, the Zephyr repository we have there on the right, um, it's uh, well organized to facilitate development. Uh, we have there a uh, high-level overview of uh, its structure. We have uh, architecture-specific files in the Arch, board configuration files in boards, uh, build files in CMake, uh, driver code. Uh, in DTS, we have uh, device tree files where we uh, define non-discoverable uh, hardware for specific boards. Uh, in kernel, we have architecture-independent kernel code. In Lib, we have library code like uh, the minimal standard C library. Uh, a lot of samples in Zephyr uh, to demonstrate the features of Zephyr. Uh, in stock, we have system on chip uh, uh, files. In some manifest, we add there the optional modules, tests, a lot of tests. And in addition to all these folders here, we have uh, configurations and build files like kconfig, CMake list, and um, the main manifest, that's the West YML. Now, about the license. So Zephyr ha is uh, Apache 2.0 uh, uh, licensed. Uh, it's a permissive uh, and uh, easy to understand uh, uh, license. Uh, it's highly, widely used in the world of IoT. Uh, but it also uses and imports uh, some scripts uh, or um, uh, packages uh, that are uh, GPL v2. Um, also, uh, very important, um, 
for Zephyr, uh, it's uh, very important to follow the uh, uh, developer certificate of origin uh, process. That means that uh, when you have a contribution, by adding your sign of buy on uh, your patch, uh, you agree with this uh, DCO. And uh, also each uh, file, each source code file uh, from Zephyr has uh, an uh, SPD, uh, SPDX uh, license identifier which clearly states the license of that, uh, of that file. If we want to import code in Zephyr, which is uh, not uh, Apache 2.0, uh, well, in this case, there are um, additional steps to be followed. Um, uh, and uh, usually this uh, code uh, needs to be approved uh, by uh, uh, Zephyr Technical Steering Committee or even by the governing board. And this flowchart shows the process of, uh, of this. I'm not going to enter into details, but uh, there are a lot of steps to to follow in order to be approved. Okay, let's see some uh, prerequisites of uh, creating an application, of application development. So uh, usually we, uh, the Arch uh, support is mandatory to be in Zephyr. We also expect for the board or SOC or device tree to be there, but they can also be out of tree. Uh, in case they are out of tree, it's very important for the board and SOC to have the exact uh, structure as in Zephyr. So on the right side we have a, a board structure. Uh, there are multiple uh, files that can be found uh, there, but uh, uh, only the blue ones are, are important. So in the board YML, we add uh, the name of the board, the um, uh, SOX uh, um, and variants of that board. In uh, kconfig, we specify uh, settings that are uh, specific for that particular board, uh, settings like um, board's hardware layout, uh, memory size, or some uh, peripheral configurations. And uh, for the DTS, uh, we add their information regarding uh, some uh, uh, socks, about the socks of the board, uh, about uh, connectors or other uh, hardware components, like, I don't know, LEDs, uh, buttons, or other uh, uh, connectors. So if we have an out of three uh, board or SOC or DTS, we can give that uh, just uh, uh, as a CMake uh, uh, variables uh, when building the application with uh, West Build. Now, another important prerequisite it's to, to be uh, uh, followed is the build system uh, of Zephyr, which is uh, uh, based on CMake, and this is application centric. Uh, that means that um, uh, it requires that the Zephyr-based application to initiate the build of uh, uh, Zephyr code. Uh, so um, the application build controls the uh, initialis the it, it initiates actually the uh, building of uh, uh, Zephyr code and it combine it compiles them into one single uh, binary file. Um, uh, the files in the application directory link Zephyr and any modules with the application uh, itself. On the right there, we have a, a structure of an uh, application. Um, the most important files there are the CMake list. Uh, that's uh, the file that uh, is used to uh, combine our application with the CMake uh, 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 build system from, from Zephyr. And it's also used to tell the build system what other files are used for uh, our uh, application. And of course, the, C code, the source code, which can be found in the SRC uh, folder. In order to integrate uh, external codes, there are two main uh, uh, options. So we can integrate them uh, uh, directly in the Zephyr repository. That's by importing the source code into Zephyr. So, um, uh, but here we have to follow some requirements from Zephyr. That is the license, the coding style, the uh, static analysis. Uh, the second uh, options will be to import parts of uh, a whole uh, uh, um, third party open source project uh, into a separate repository and integrate it uh, with Zephyr uh, uh, as a module. Uh, okay, so modules, I've talked about a bit uh, earlier. There are, uh, modules are limited uh, uh, to, okay, the, actually we, let, let's take uh, these three options of, uh, of modules and um, we'll, uh, we'll see which one 
uh, it's best for a particular case. So we, we have to pay attention which kind of modules uh, we use and where do we integrate it. So if we want to add modules in the main manifest file, uh, in the West YML, these are limited to modules, to projects that are used by Zephyr subsystem, like, uh, I don't know, libraries, by a platform, by uh, hardware abstraction, uh, like hardware abstraction layer where we have the drivers for a particular uh, uh, vendor, silicon vendor. We have um, tools that are used to build and test uh, Zephyr components. Now, we, uh, optional module, we can integrate optional module. This should be, uh, standalone projects that have no dependencies or are on any other project from Zephyr, uh, and they are added in a special uh, YML file. And then we have the external modules. These are not in the manifest of Zephyr. They are uh, out of tree, and we provide only documentation on, on how a user or um, a, a developer can um, activate uh, uh, their functionality. <clears throat> Okay, now it's the main topic of our presentation on how can we create an application. But first, let's see what type of application can we, can we do. Uh, so there are three main applications. We can, uh, based on the location of our application, we can have repository application that's in a West workspace and uh, it's in Zephyr repository. Next, next we have uh, a workspace. That means that it's outside of Zephyr repository but in a Zephyr uh, workspace. And uh, the, last, uh, the last one is a freestanding application. It's outside of uh, our um, uh, workspace. Uh, in the next, on the next few slides, I'm going to show you uh, an application I've created. And uh, we're going to move that application from repository to a freestanding application to see what changes we have to do for, uh, for these cases. We're not going to talk about uh, workspace because it's very similar with the first one. Uh, and uh, there are not much, actually there are no changes to make. Um, I, wish, I will explain later um, what changes would, might be uh, possible, but it's, it's very similar with the first one. Okay, so I've created an application, a number crunching sample. It does some vector operation, um, fast Fourier transformation and uh, uh, filtering. Uh, uh, in order, th this uh, application will be uh, moved in and out of tree to see what changes. Uh, to demonstrate how to integrate proprietary code, I've used the Nature DSP library from Cadence, um, which is in an out of tree location because it has a proprietary uh, license. Uh, and by default, this sample is using CMC's DSP, which is in Zephyr uh, as a module. Okay, this is the, the uh, structure of, uh, of uh, my application. Uh, important, as, important files uh, are in um, uh, SRC uh, folder. So uh, the main, uh, it's we, we, we do the operations. In MathOps, I've created a common API for the two, uh, for CMC's DSP and Nature DSP. And the specific API is called in, um, in their specific uh, wrapper. Okay, in order to, um, uh, to link our application to the uh, CMake build system and with the out of tree uh, uh, library, we need to have some specific CMake uh, commands in, uh, in CMake list uh, file. So let's see. In the first part, we specify the source code and include directory. Now comes the interesting part. Um, Next, we define an environmental variable. I call it uh, a lib location. And based on this, uh, we select the backend. Uh, with the add subdirectory CMA command, we add the external location of our library. Uh, uh, using using uh, link libraries, we link with the external library and we include directory. Now, on my external lib location, I have the uh, library, I have the headers, and the CMA list file. In the, this CMake list, I'm just setting three variables. So lib location, lib uh, name, and include directory. These uh, are used on the application side, as, you, as you've seen uh, earlier, to link uh, with the library and to include directories. Now, we can make some changes. We can move the part of uh, uh, link uh, library and include directory from the application 
in the externally blocation, or as you, as you can see in this example, or we can use a CMake variable rather than an environmental variable. Let's see what uh, changes, uh, wh why would you do those, those changes? Well, there's not much of, of a difference. Uh, difference is in the build command. So uh, when we build the application, uh, I don't know if you pay attention, but this was a, a repository uh, sample, repository uh, application, because it's, it was located in a Zephyr repository. So to build it, we use West build, we give the name of our board and uh, the path to the, um, to the application. So in this case, if we use um, an, environment, an environmental variable to set uh, the location of our uh, nature DSP library, we need to set it before building the application. Uh, otherwise, the CMC's DSP backend will be used. Uh, if we use a CMake variable, uh, we just pass it uh, uh, when building the application. With, as you can see with, here as, uh, as the second example with minus D lib location. Now, the second solution of how can we integrate our external code in Zephyr. Uh, this is the Zephyr way, I call it. Uh, that means that uh, we are using the external module mechanism from Zephyr. Uh, for this, we need to uh, add the uh, Zephyr extra module of CMake variable when building the application. Uh, this CMake variable, it's already uh, um, used by, uh, CMake, uh, by Zephyr CMake build system. Uh, so uh, we just pass it when building the application. Now, uh, in this case, our external lib location is seen as an external module. Um, so to be a, an external module, we need to have in Zephyr a special structure. So we need to have this Zephyr folder in our uh, external module with this module YML file. Uh, here in uh, the YML file, we need to specify the name of our external module because this will be used when building the application. It refers to, to this uh, uh, sample, when, to this uh, external module when building it. And also, uh, next with CMake, we specify the location of our build uh, file, our CMake list uh, file. In our case, it's in um, uh, the root uh, folder of our external module. And next, we define a blob. Let's see what's a blob. Okay. so. Uh, in, with this solution, we use binary blobs to build with our external lib location. So what is a binary blob? A binary blob, it's a proprietary uh, machine code and data built in a, a binary file, uh, and its source code is not released uh, under an uh, open source initiative uh, license. Um, Zephyr um, uh, can uh, download and use the binary blobs uh, via its built-in system mechanism, actually. And um, yeah, that's about it, actually, about the binary blobs. But in order to use these binary blobs, we have to specify uh, uh, the blob section in uh, modules YML with those entries there. So we have the path where the binary blob uh, will be uh, downloaded. Um, uh, rel relative to our uh, external module. Uh, we have a SHA, this is used to uh, uh, verify that the binary blob is, uh, is valid. Uh, we have the type, there are two types uh, supported right now in Zephyr. Uh, okay, the version, the license path is very important. We have to have a license for that binary blob. The binary blob, it's, uh, it's in, uh, uh, okay, it has, usually has a proprietary, uh, proprietary license and we need to have that. Uh, the URL, it's the location where the binary blob will be uh, fetched from, uh, description, a human readable description of that blob, and the doc URL contains the documentation about that binary blob, how can you use it, uh, and how to use, uh, how to uh, enable uh, its functionality. Um, this binary blob, it's fetched using west blob command, and very important, this command only fetches the binary blob. So if you need any other uh, accompanying code, like the headers, they are not uh, brought uh, with, with the binary blob, only, uh, only that blob. So we need to have the headers, in our case, uh, in the external uh, uh, module. Let's see what changes. Uh, so in the CMake list file, do you observe something? 
not much, <laughs> I'm telling you. So we just include directory and we link with our, ex uh, with our external library, which right now actually is a blob. It's called a blob, but it's still that library. Now, uh, on the application side, uh, we, we, are, we are checking for the Zephyr extra module uh, uh, variable. If it's defined, okay, we're selecting the nature DSP uh, backend, otherwise the CMC's DSP will be, will be used. Let's see what changes if we move our application from Zephyr uh, outside of tree. It will be a freestanding application, if you remember. So actually, everything applies as before. Uh, just the build commands uh, uh, will, will change a bit. Uh, if we are building from a, a Zephyr uh, workspace, uh, we use the west build command. We give the absolute path or uh, the relative uh, uh, path to the application. And in Zephyr, uh, we get the build folder. Um, I was mentioning before that I will not talk about uh, the workspace application, but while I'm here, I will tell you that it's not much of a difference because if we have the application in another place, also in the Zephyr workspace, we just give that path to uh, relative to uh, our project to our uh, uh, Zephyr workspace. So that's why I'm saying it's not, it's not much of a difference. Now, if we are building the application outside Zephyr workspace, uh, we are going to use CMake and Nija. Uh, this is a three-step three, three uh, process. Uh, we'll set the Zephyr location, we'll use CMake to get the build folder, and use Ninja to compile the code. So first, we need to set Zephyr base. This is an environmental variable where we, uh, we set the location of our uh, Zephyr workspace. This ensures that the CMake um, can automatically select a Zephyr uh, installation to use for building our uh, application. Second step will be to use CMake uh, to generate the Ninja based system build. Uh, and we get the build folder there in our application. In, uh, in this case, uh, now we have in the build, we have the Ninja build file and other uh, uh, generated build files. And finally, uh, we use uh, Ninja to compile the code and we get our elf in the build folder in, uh, di in the directory, in um, our application directory. Okay, another use case is a custom workspace. That means that for a custom workspace, we'll need to have a specific manifest. That means a specific West YML for our application. So in, uh, in this uh, contains a description of Zephyr uh, installation, including Git uh, uh, repository, and the necessary uh, dependencies uh, of our application. So this is uh, an example of how our uh, West YML will look like for this particular sample. So uh, we only need uh, the CMC's DSP, the Extensa HAL and NXP HAL, and we are going to um, mention this using name allow list. And for the Zephyr uh, repository, we're gonna use main branch. So uh, that's about it. Why should I bring all the dependencies from Zephyr if I need only this? So, I'll create my own West YML. Um, next, when building the application, after we initialize the workspace, uh, we use West update to populate the, the workspace, so only the needed dependencies are brought there, and uh, next we can build the application uh, as before, West build and the application. And yeah, that's about it. Um, that's about it about uh, uh, an application. We can also have out of three device drivers. And I have there on the right um, a proof of source code of a proof of concept uh, of an interrupt, uh, actually, yeah, interrupt controller uh, for RQ Steer. RQ Steer is, a, is an interrupt controller uh, on the um, uh, DSP subsystem of IDOTMX uh, 8M. Uh, we know its base address, uh, we know the interrupt number. Uh, we use Zephyr API, interrupt uh, API, uh, to enable the interrupt and to uh, register the handler. And uh, what we do is just trigger an interrupt to test the ISR is called. And you can see here on the left that uh, uh, our interrupt is triggered, that's the uh, console output. Of course, this device driver, this proof of concept device driver can be improved and uh, can be uh, 
enhanced to be as Zephyr, uh, as a Zephyr uh, device driver, uh, we can uh, take the interrupt number or the base address from DTS. We can uh, interface it with uh, interrupt management subsystem from Zephyr. Uh, and also we can uh, integrate it uh, with uh, the build infrastructure. Okay, next topic is toolchain. Uh, Zephyr SDK contains uh, uh, toolchains for each Zephyr supported architecture. Uh, it's uh, recommended to be used and in some uh, uh, condition this is uh, required, like uh, in um, uh, continuous integration. But you can also use some custom uh, toolchains. For that, you need to define two environmental variables, uh, Zephyr toolchain variant, that's the toolchain name, and toolchain root, the path to the directory where we have the toolchain's uh, CMake uh, configuration file. We can uh, uh, set this environmental variable, or we can pass them directly when building our application with West Build or with CMake, as you can see here in these two examples. Uh, Next, uh, we are going to talk about uh, Sound Open Firmware and its integration to, with, uh, with Zephyr. Uh, okay, a little bit about Sound Open Firmware. It's an open source um, uh, audio DSP firmware and SDK. Has its own repository, its own lifecycle, CI, uh, tools, and uh, everything. Uh, it's uh, BSD3 uh, closed licensed, uh, but also has some device drivers that are BSD and uh, or GPL. Um, so uh, Sound Open Firmware started as a standalone project, no Zephyr relationship uh, whatsoever. Uh, it was using Extensa um, uh, OS and uh, its own uh, device drivers. So later on, Sound Open Firmware uh, Technical uh, Steering Committee decided to switch from uh, Extensa OS to Zephyr. Uh, once the Extensa architecture was uh, added in, uh, uh, in Zephyr, we only had to add the board support uh, this is something I've done three years ago. Uh, I've added the support for uh, the um, uh, audio DSP subsystem on IDOTMX8 family, and I ported to hardware model two, uh, to hardware model two a uh, few months back. Um, and at that point, Sound Open Firmware was an out of three application that was using only the Zephyr Kellner API. The platform drivers were still in, uh, in uh, SOF, like my proof of concept device driver I've showed you uh, earlier. Now we are porting the platform driver from SOF to Zephyr. So uh, uh, Sound Open Firmware will use not just the kernel API, but also the device driver's API from Zephyr. Uh, and also Sound Open Firmware was accepted as an optional uh, Zephyr uh, module. So I've showed you this uh, because uh, you can start from a standalone uh, application, which is not a small application, it's a firmware, and you can port it to, uh, to Zephyr or use some parts of Zephyr. So, okay, let's make a summary now. Uh, Zephyr build system is very powerful. You can do the same thing in multiple ways. Uh, you can create an application in and out of three. You can link it with an external library using external modules or not. Uh, you can use binary blobs uh, for an external library or not. Uh, you can also have device drivers that are out of three, but you can also have SOC or uh, board or uh, device trees. So uh, there are extensive documentation and samples, including mine in Zephyr, uh, as a starting point that, that can be used as a starting point. Uh, just you need to pay attention to the license, as in any other project. So thank you. Okay, we have some time for questions, if anybody has any questions. Hi, just, what, uh, just one question about uh, this uh, uh, out of three uh, uh, build. As I understand, we still need to modify uh, Zephyr itself, to modify this um, modules YAML to have this uh, downloading working, right? or I missed something. Uh, uh, that module's YML, you add it in your external module. You don't have to modify anything from Zephyr uh, source code. You have it in your external module, you put it there, and you modify it as you want. Well, you have to uh, follow some rules <laughs> for that, but you're not modifying uh, source code in Zephyr or any other configuration file. It's in your external code. 
Okay. Mucho la creo. Okay. Anyone? Uh, so do you have it on the roadmap to convert uh, the sound open firmware drivers? Or what is that for? When's that going to happen? Uh, well, it's in, it's ongoing. It's, this is ongoing. We already done for uh, um, some of them, uh, and uh, I think we have one or two PRs open right now. But it's uh, it's working pretty well. <laughs> it will be done. It will be finished soon. Okay. Any more questions? I think that's it. Then thank you, Ileana. Thank you.